gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gamers. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Polar Night. So, y'all, after the lights went off and we got a good glimpse of uh, some of them lovely, lovely men, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Pulling the tower from the metal rack, I vigorously dried myself. My I felt okay, but I decided to put my Diclo drops in anyway, just in case. Once back in my bedroom, I started pulling on my clothes. Pretty expensive cold weather gear, but now I realize that I only had the single set of it. Changes of underwear and socks and shirts wouldn't mean much if I wore the same sweltering jacket and trousers for the next two weeks. I noted with chagrin that the stench of smoke was still strong. I could clean up as much as I liked the moment I put these on. I'd be covered in it. My hands moved as if on autopilot to my pockets. In my left, my lighter. My right, my packet of cigarettes. I was halfway to pulling out my first light when it struck me. I was on a ship. I can't smoke here, not unless I want to set off alarms and get a bollocking. Assuming the smoke alarms even work on this rust bucket. I slowly slid the lighter back to my pocket and returned the cigarette to the pack after breakfast. After breakfast, I could hang on that long at least. <laughs> As I entered the lounge, the scent of food instantly triggered another loud, loud growl from my stomach. I could hear the sounds of frying and sizzling from the kitchen hatch. Oh, morning, Garrett. Sleep well? She was standing by the hatch to the kitchen, holding a metal tray with a cover. She, even, she, had, yeah, she had oven mitts on as she moved over to the buffet stand. Oh, yeah, pretty well that whole, that whole drama notwithstanding. Again, sorry about that. My stomach drew my attention to the tray she was carrying. It growled again, especially as June lifted the cover off the tray and a steaming batch of creamy scrambled eggs caught the glow of the buffet, he the buffet heat lamp. Food is ready, just needs setting out. Go grab a plate and a table, it'll just be a few more minutes. She sidled off to the hatch and picked up a new tray. As she did, I noticed her rubbing her left arm near the elbow. She massaged her arm fin and grimaced. Hey, you okay? Hmm? Did you hurt your arm? Oh, this? She stopped rubbing her arm and gave me a chagrin smile, splaying her th fingers and giving me jazz hands as if to demonstrate her functioning limbs. No, no, it's fine, just a little bruise. She frowned a bit, wincing at her as her movement obviously triggered her injury and rubbed her elbow again. My damn cabin door sticks. I'd really pull it this morning, then it popped open and smacked into my elbow. I keep meaning to ask Joseph to take a look, but he's but he's snowed under right now. I remember the events of last night, how I thought to speak to Joseph about the emergency lights, or the lack of them. I wasn't an expert on maritime law, but I figured having working emergency lights might be some kind of regulatory requirement. June would know. Before I could ask, my thoughts were interrupted by another growl from my stomach. June snickered, nudged me with her good arm, and marched back to the kitchen hatch to grab another tray, another tray of food. She lifted a rather large tray and winced, hesitating before walking carefully toward the buffet table. I watched her teeth clench as she quick walked the last few paces and clanked it down, hissing through her teeth and rubbing her arm. Uh, June, why don't I carry the trays over? What? Oh no, absolutely not! You're a guest here! Really, it's not as bad as it seems. She put on a brave face, but I, but I wasn't having it. June, I was, I was go I'm going to grab a tray. Why don't you serve up? I gestured to the buffet table, filled with gleaming, chafing dishes under heat lamps. Garrett, really? Honestly, it's fine. I may look like a twig, but I promise I can handle it. She gave a little snort. She'd seen me last night in my underwear, so she knew just how skinny I was under this jacket. I heart accelerated the memory, and not in a good way. Thanks, Garrett. You're a sweetheart. I started shuttling the trays back and forth from the kitchen as she filled the buffet with piping hot, mouth-watering foods. Creamy scrambled eggs, crisp, crisp and golden hash browns, crispy vegetarian bacon and sausages, mushrooms and butter. By the time I'd, fought the, I'd brought the final tray back to the kitchen and June was finishing stacking up the buffet, my belly was practically vibrating with hunger. Woo! Great team effort, Mr. Reed! Indeed, Miss... Indeed, Miss Gavron. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to grab breakfast before my stomach implodes. Sounds messy. Don't let me keep you. She grinned and ambled off, disappearing up the steps to the bridge deck. I grabbed a plate and stared at the bounty before me. Admittedly, I'd have preferred some real bacon and sausage, but on a mixed-species crew like this, it was to be expected that no real meat would be found. The far end of the buffet had fresh steamed vegetables of various kinds, followed by eggs and baked beans, mushrooms, and as I scanned the other side, the foods became more decadent. Deciding to leave the vegetables, I grabbed a few hash browns and a scoop of scrambled eggs just as the door opened and Tabby walked in. Our eyes met for a moment. I had no idea how someone so, so slight could have such an intimidating gaze, although as she walked over, her expression was decidedly less unfriendly. Morning. Morning. Sleep well? Her less than stellar first night aboard hit me just as I spoke and I caught my tongue. Fortunately, she did, either didn't notice or didn't care. Second y'all, coffee time. The most important time of the day. Alright. So 
fine. Sandalfish as per usual, but her tone wasn't hostile. She sidled up next to me and started to scoop some veg onto her plate before surveying the rest. I wanted to ask her if she was okay, but I didn't want to pry either. She struck me as someone who was pretty private, and I didn't know if Gail had let on that she'd told us about her nectophobia. Plus, she seemed to be in a relatively good mood for the first time since I'd met her. But I also didn't want to just pretend like nothing had happened. Surely she was smart enough to know that, even if, I did, even if we didn't know why. Her scream was the reason for the commotion last night. The silence hung in fear until the awkwardness forced the words out of my mouth. So, uh, are you okay? She turned to look at me, her expression unchanged as though she'd not quite heard me. Okay, what do you mean? I mean, about last night. Immediately her expression darkened, she gave me an accusing look. What about last night? Well, I'd started this, might as well just bite the bullet. Gail said you have nyctophobia, and after that power cut you seemed pretty upset, just checking if you were okay. I cringed inwardly, expecting her to tell me to shove it or shout at me. Instead, her expression shifted. I couldn't tell what she was feeling, but I could say she was... Say she didn't seem pissed off, it pissed at me at least. Just, if you wanted to say anything, I'm sorry for sticking my nose into your business. Afterward, her hurried apology and turned back to the food, grabbing tonguefuls of stuff with little thought just to escape the situation as quickly as possible. Aww. She smiled. I'm okay. I glanced up. To my utter amazement, she was smiling. Thanks for asking. Stunned by her response, I watched as she scooped a portion of eggs onto her plate and a few hash browns before strolling away toward a table. As I filled up my plate, the others started filtering into the room. Aaron and Stefan first, then Rufus, Dana, and Gail, and finally Sher Sharif. Sheriff. Sheriff. Sharif? I don't know. Sharif. I stepped away from the buffet as they all crowded round, picking up a hash brown and popping into my mouth. It crunched satisfyingly in my mouth, overriding the pain response from being too slightly too hot. There was a smattering there was a smattering of chat as people helped themselves to the buffet. I noticed Dana looked pretty rough. Bags under her eyes, unfocused gaze. God damn, how long had she stayed up drinking? I guess that was why she'd not appeared during last night's kerfuffle. One by one, they spread out across the lounge, clustering into groups. Stefan, Sheriff, and Aaron were seated at the top of the conference table we'd had our lab meeting last night. Stefan was excitedly blabbering, Aaron chuckling and nodding along. Sheriff was surprisingly attentive, not speaking but observing, sipping his tea. Holy shit, did Sheriff just smile? Gail and Tabby were seated with Dana and Rufus around the sofa where the Caprine sisters had had their argument the previous night. Gail and Rufus were their usual gregarious selves, while Tabby was quiet and focused on her food. Dana was mostly shifting the rather meager portion of food on her plate around, resting her head in her hand. I knew very well the look of someone nursing a hangover. She did perk up when Gail asked her something, like a switch had been flipped. She became animated, whatever effects of the hangover seemingly forgotten. Who do I want, who do I want to sit with? Um... Uh, for, okay, so maybe this is a branching off point, maybe? Yeah, this is like a branching off point, so... I see Safan, Aaron, and Sharif. Sheriff, whatever. Aaron was shoving Safan playfully as I stepped closer. Sheriff sipped his tea silently. Hey, mind if I join you? Safan beamed at me and patted the seat next to the seat behind him. One second, y'all. It is coffee time. Of course you can. Sit your ass down. I said, I sat by while Aaron was on his opposite side. Sheriff sat at the head of the table. I had a leather notebook open in one hand as he picked delicately at his food. Sharif's plate was surprisingly light. A heap of steamed peas and carrots, a small amount of eggs, and a single hash brown. Aaron's plate was similar, just with larger portions and a helping of baked beans. Stefan, on the other hand, on top of having four large hash browns, he'd managed to cram a bit of everything from the buffet onto his plate, except the steamed egg. Except the steamed veg. I felt full just looking at it. Christ, lad, where do you put it? The hare noticed him in the, in the ribs, making the possum wince with an oof. What? I'm a growing boy. I need my vitamins. You'll be doing a lot of growing if you stuff your face like this all the time. Hey! He gave the hare a wounded look. I always, I always eat healthy. I just don't often get to eat free stuff, and I mean... He stabbed a single sausage on his fork and twirled it round slowly, as if marveling at it. Chef, do chef does some good chow. You can't deny it. After last night's dinner, I believe you believe that. I thought you were going to explode. Stop exaggerating. You ate enough for a family of four. Did not. It was horrifying. I've never seen anything like it. His completely solemn expression made me crack up. Iron leaned, leaned around him and gazed at me with an exaggerated, wide-eyed look of terror. Oh, we thought we were going to have to roll him down to the cabins. And Stefan huffed in a final show of defiance. Opened his gob and flashed bare in a mouthful of chewed food. Stefan, that's disgusting. 
She fond of snickered, but his attention and Amara quickly drawn to Sharif. He'd been hiding his expression through sips of tea. He'd been hiding his expression through sips of tea, but the sight of Stefan Stefan gurning at Aaron proved too much. He gave a brief snorting laugh, a wide smile breaking through his normally stone-like expression. The three of us gave him amazed looks. You can smile. You should do it more. It was rather a strange look given how stiff and standoffish he'd been up till now, but it certainly was a nice sight. He brought himself under control, giving a dainty cough and looking slightly embarrassed. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I can smile. It's the first time I've seen you do it, though. Sharif looked a little taken aback. He rubbed his chin, looking thoughtful. Do I really come across that way? Don't worry about it. It's nice to it's just nice to see you smile. You were so serious yesterday. I apologize in that case. I, it wasn't my intention to be rude. Yesterday was the culmination of many months of effort, and also the first time I had met so many friends and family of the Iran crew. His newfound warmth was a welcome shift from his normal world's largest stick up my arse demeanor. I was meaning to ask, what was Professor Hagen like? Sharif's smile faded. I noticed Stefan in the ribs as a warning to drop it, but apparently Aaron had the same idea. Our combined elbows must have been like a gut punch. Oof! Are, are you alright? Stefan's voice came out as a squeak. I'm fine! Sharif broke into a smile again, though I could see in his eyes that he was not quite over being reminded of his friend. We ate in silence for a while, Sharif staring as if lost in thought at the table while he idly poked at his food. Me and Aaron shot Stefan frustrated looks. He responded with a shrug and a defensive roll of his eyes. He taught me every he taught me everything I know. His breaking the silence caught us off guard, and all three of us looked up from our breakfasts. You mean Hagen, right? His voice was gentle, seemingly worried about upsetting Sharif. Indeed, his specialty was archaeology, but he knew more than I ever could about anthropology. It was a leading light in his field. The world lost a great man when the Iran vanished. Stefan bristled between us, and Aaron and I both shot him warning looks. Again, he rolled his eyes but didn't interrupt. I owe it to him to discover his fate. Doesn't he have family? I, I thought a man like that would have, a would have any number of friends, family, kids even. Regretfully, no. Hagen was always obsessed with his work. No time for family. Excuse me, Professor Abdi, but... Stefan... Stefan... Stefan finally could not contain himself, though his voice was softer than normal. Sharif. No point standing on formalities while we were here, do you not agree? Okay, sorry, Sharif. I was meaning to ask about, about you about that, actually. You just said Hagen was an archaeologist? Yes. What about it? But I thought you were an anthropologist. Oh, one second now. It is water time. Well, more like soda, but y'all get the gist. I am. Archaeology and anthropology have much in common. My field focuses on the study of sentient, so sentient societies, although my particular focus is on ancient societies from the Mosaic period. Wow, really? I gave an audible groan and buried my face in my hands, leading Aaron and Sheriff to, to give me odd looks. Have you ever read Distant Oranges by Rupert Kadala? Stefan, could you please leave this till later? Stefan looked like he was going to explode, but I didn't care. I absolutely did not need to listen to his prattling this time of the morning, and never, especially over breakfast. Sharif and Aaron looked, both looked at us oddly, and, but Stefan amazingly huffed and sat back, biting his tongue. Anyway, Sharif, w w what is that book you keep reading? Oh, this? It's my notebook, nothing more. I wanted to press him, but his tone turned sharp. His eyes his eyes regained some of that, st that stony intensity of yesterday. As the look that said, this topic is off limits. We ate in silence for a while more as we finished our breakfasts, finishing my plate Lee. Leaning back and sighing, I couldn't argue with Stefan. It was good. Simple food. Yeah, so already this story is really reminding me of At the Mountains of Madness. Yeah, like, really. Like, you've got a guy who studies archaeology and a guy who studies anthropology, specifically specializing in societies from ancient times. Hmm. I wonder what that, I wonder what that, what kind of short story that sounds like. Anyway. Like, it's, it's really cool. Like, I love it. It's awesome. But, like, it's it's definitely a trope that's been used a lot. Um, doesn't bother me one bit. I like it. It's a cool trope. I love I love uh, Doomed Expeditions discovering horrifying uh, remnants of the past or whatever. Or things not of this world. Anyway. We ate in silence for a while, for a while more as we finished our breakfasts. I finished my plate, leaning back and sawing. I couldn't argue with Stefan. It was good. It was simple food. So, hey, I've got my camera. Anyone want to come sightseeing with me? It's brighter, it's brighter out than last night. Might get some good views. Thanks, but I might go to the gym for the sauna. Wherever I don't see, I don't have to see her. 
He glared in the direction of the other table, where Dana had stu stood to excuse herself. It seemed the other group was finishing up breakfast, too. There was a light tapping under the table, which I assumed was Aaron getting antsy about last night again. I regret I cannot join you. I'll be busy at the- I'll be busy most of the day with the captain. Fine. I'll be on the deck if you need me. With that, we all rose to our feet. We took our plates and cups to the kitchen hatch, where the other group had already gathered. We all shuffled around the hatch to drop off our plates before coalescing into a vague, vague group in the middle of the Explorers Club. Stefan had produced from somewhere a pretty expensive-looking camera. I tensed up. I tensed up instantly. I really don't like getting my picture taken. I'm gonna head outside for some fresh air and see if I can take some photos. <clears throat> that's right, Rufus. Southern. Southern Rufus. Okay. I was thinking I might use the gym if that's okay, June. Of course. Knock yourself out. I I figuratively, of course. June, if you wouldn't mind, I was going to take a look at the ki at the cinema. Could you help set it up? Alrighty. What about the sauna? I might avail myself if that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not in service right now. Uh, Joseph is looking into it, though. But hopefully to be fixed shortly. Figures. As everyone as everyone dispersed, I found myself unsure of what to do. I now had a chance to really talk take in the Sylvia last night, so I figured I might as well have a look around. I pulled out the handbook I'd been given. The facilities all looked kind of... Bear. The gym looked like a generic cabin. A generic cabin with some weight benches and exercise bikes thrown in. The sauna looked away. The sauna looked okay, but that was obviously out of the question. Besides, I hate intense heat. The cinema. The cinema kind of looked like a common room someone had thrown some, some chairs and a projector in. But I guess it might be nice to take in a movie in the evenings. I had to remind myself that this wasn't a holiday and we weren't here to have a time of our lives. The fact that we had even had these facilities, basics as they were, during his search was something to be grateful for. I suppose. Where do I go? Alright, so... Alright, y'all, I'm gonna pause it right there. Hey, y'all, tell me uh, how much the choosing this affects the root or anything. I'm very curious. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!